here, bud. See here, Hanby. Now keep away from me. Up here. I've been shooting in the wrong direction. You keep that gun away, Henry. Oh, sirree. If an I can't get me a rabbit, I'm going to bag me a vice president of the Continental Insurance Company. I don't aim to go home empty-handed. But we just had to see you, Jim. You wouldn't answer our wire. What's all this fuss about a string full of emeralds? You can't eat them. They don't keep you warm. They're the frost emeralds. They've been stolen. We've insured them for $100,000. How long they been gone? Since last night. Well... The way I figured out, something ought to be done about it. Well, that's why we're here. What do you say? Well, if I was head of the investigating department of the insurance company, like you are, Davis, you know what I'd do? No, what? I'd get me a detective. Not unless you go out again and knock. Uh, our, our car broke down. Yes, at the crossroads. There's a telephone. Oh, yes, of course. Thanks. Well, what are you standing there for? Just watching you make lunch. Coffee sure smells good. I might give you some if you wasn't such a pair of liars. The road between here and the crossroads is awful muddy. We cut across the field. Yes, uh, we were in a hurry. Sitting in my barn must have slowed you down. Now, don't waste your time trying to fool me. I got bacon and eggs to eat. Well, Mr. Hanby, I guess you found us out, and we're going to tell you just why we're here. We brought you one of the biggest cases you've ever had. Sit down. Oh, thanks. My name's Don Terry. Oh, a great writer, Mr. Handy. Great. Great. One of America's greatest. You don't say. Well, let's do away with false modesty. Of course, at the moment, I'm forced to write a newspaper column on the care and feeding of fish. Just think of it. He has to write that sort of thing just to support himself. And that's why you have to take the Frost case. And who might you be? I'm Joan Frost. I'm going to marry that man. Darling. Sweetheart. Don's writing the greatest book this country's ever seen. Well, wait a minute, Joan. Let me tell him about it. Oh, but you always make such a mess of it. Well, it's my book, isn't it? Look, it's going to be in five volumes. I've got the first ten pages written already. Slow and sure. That's it, son. Do you hear that, Joan? Slow and sure. That's the kind of stuff I want in my book. You, Hanvey. This room. All of America. That bacon from Iowa. I've got it in me, Hanvey. I've got it in me. You sure have. And that bread from the wheat fields of Nebraska. The Chicago streets, dark at night. The Seattle waterfront. All those things are going to be in my book, Mr. Hanvey. That's why you got to take the frost case. Why are you so interested in them emeralds? Why? I stole them. <laughs> well, of all the nervy, thieving critters I ever hey, saw... Hey, don't get us wrong, Mr. Hanvey. I had to do it, Mr. Hanvey. I couldn't let those two fellas make a sap out of me. You had two men with you? No, they were against him. They bet me a hundred dollars I wasn't as good a cracksman as Raffles. Oh, and you bet that you were, huh? Well, I had a couple of drinks. Well, it was at my coming out party. Everybody had a couple of drinks. My honor and a hundred bucks was at stake. Now, what was I going to do? I cracked the safe. Now, just a minute. You mean to tell me you actually cracked the frost safe? Well, Joan helped a little. She knew the combination. Well, that probably came in handy. I had the jewels, and I was on my way back to the club to collect a bet when all of a sudden, bango. Bango. That's when it all started. What do you mean, bango? Well, it was morning, and I was in my bed, and I was all dressed, and, and the emeralds were gone. Well, that's one for your book. And you're going to find them for us, Mr. Handy. I'll pay you a fee of $50. All right, if you're going to haggle, 60 65 75 The way you talk about money, miss, you'd think you was a government. Don't tell me what I think. What are you going to do? I aim to get me some preserves and finish my dinner. Don't take this case, I'm sunk. They'll put the police on it and everything will come out. Those two fellas knew I planned to take the emeralds and, and I'll, I'll go to jail. Well, jail's the most peaceable place I know of to write, this side of the cemetery. Yes, and my father and mother will see that Terry gets lied. Well, you've just got to take this case. I wouldn't touch it with a ten-foot pole. No, you neither. You are just honor enough to live off of this girl's money. We didn't come down here for a sermon. No? You came down here thinking you could buy all this. 
Well, there ain't enough good common sense between you to hold yourselves down. Who do you think you are? You can't talk to us like that. Come on, scat. Get out of here. Scat. Stubborn old fool. We better go back to town and take our medicine. We can't. Hey, what is this? You don't think he was skipping town with those emeralds without us following? What emeralds? You leave him alone. I tell you, I haven't got them. Cut it out. You all keep it quiet. Get the idea? I tell you, I oh, haven't got them. Give me that. Cut what do you think we came out here for? Hello, Romo. Did you come up for the shooting? Oh, hello, Hamby. Who's a hayseed? He's all right. Same, he's been doing a rap three years ago. Yeah, I thought I reformed you that time, Romo. You did. I ain't a pickpocket no more. High class jewelry. That's my line now. Yeah. Well, if you're looking for them frost jewels, they're not on these two brats. Can I take that for a guaranteed statement? Don't let him kid you. Maybe Grandpa's carrying them around himself. Say, you're fixing to get yourself massacred, young fella. We farmers around here don't hold no truck with gangsters. What was that? Why, that was just a... That just means that I put one over on you two fellers. What are you giving us? You saw me wave that straw, didn't you? Yeah. Well, so did my hound dog, Bud. He was watching me right through that window. Trained to the straw, Bud is. What's that mean? That signal sent Bud hightailing down the road to Twitchell's. <coughs> There's Twitchell now, blowing his ram's horn. The place will be swarming with vigilantes and shotguns in three minutes. One time, they made it in two. Well, if Hamby says they ain't got the emeralds, I guess they ain't. Yeah, but what'll the boy say? Well, there ain't no point in staying. Them vigilantes will be mighty hungry when they do get here. I don't know how to thank you. Hush. Come on. We're going to town. You mean you've changed your mind about us? You're everything I said you was. The only decent thing about you is the way you love each other. Maybe something will come of that. But I'll take the case. You mean you'll help us? I'd help a mangy cat if two gunmen like Romo and Smith was on his tail. You're in deep trouble now. Terry, telephone those fellas you bet with to be at your place in town when we get there. You mean we're on our way? Bango. Hmm. These calling cards nowadays are pretty and all get out. W.B. Elwood, member of the New York Stock. Say, it must cost quite a bit of money to buy a seat on that exchange. Hey, Mr. Elwood? Well, more than a hundred thousand. Well, I hope it's comfortable. <laughs> Importing and exporting. Say, you're some punkins too, Mr. Dunn. Oh, in a small way, perhaps. Small way, nothing. Why, you are two mighty important gentlemen. I don't mind telling you, I'm mighty proud meeting up with both of you. It's a real occasion. Well, we're glad to meet you, Mr. Hanvey. Well, you're important yourself in your own way, Mr. Hanvey. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you men are crooks. What did What's you the say? meaning of this? Now, stop cackling. You're not even good, honest crooks. Why, you take these two brainless harem scams... What? ...and send them after the frost jewels, and what happens? Such a mess of double crossing I never heard tell of. Why, the, the accusation... What are you talking about? Absurd. No. Now, Terry was jumped on his way from the club last night. Only one of you two who was in on that bet could have arranged that. And only the other one could have tipped off Romo and Smith today. Terry, I hold you responsible for this. Well, I can't help Why, you. Why, you took this poor half-baked critter and used him, and that crazy girl, too. You stop insulting us. The truth's insulting, I can't help it. But I'm not going to have these men sending every thug and dip and gunman in town after you. Now, one of you fess up, or I'll take you both to the police. Now, look here. You look here, folks. Will you please go away? Can't you see we're busy? Nobody what? ordered a taxi. But, Mr. Terry, I'm the guy picked you out of the gutter night before last. Oh, yeah, well, that, that's fine. Wait a minute. Uh, let him be. What gutter are you talking about? The one Mr. Terry was sleeping in. I taxied him here, tossed him in bed, and then took a dollar for the fare. Is that all you took? Well, I did slip a ten-cent tip out of his pocket. Yeah, well, that, that, that's all right. Thank but you But that's very not much. all. I picked up the cushion in my back seat this morning, and... Mr. Terry, did you lose anything? Yeah. Beads. What's the matter? Don't you want them? Oh, we want them. John, we're safe. Well, Mr. Hanby, I think apologies are in order. Well, now, maybe I did fly off the handle. But I think apologies should start with this man. I suggest that the bet that Terry won be given to him. Now, we mustn't let the Frost know anything about this. There you are. 
I forgot more for less. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, you know I'm powerful sorry for barking up the wrong tree the way I did. <laughs> no hard feelings. That's well, that's mighty right. handsome of you, gentlemen. Good, Good night, night, thanks. Good night. Good night. I wouldn't trust either one of them as far as I could throw a barn. Well, why? They didn't oh, come have on. It. You've got to get those jewels back in that safe immediately. Get your clothes on. Get out. Okay. Get on. Hurry up. We've got to get out of here. Terry has them this time. Tail them and... Uh... Okay, boss. I'll stay out here and see that no one gets in to pester you. There they are. I'll get into the house through the back. Keep the motor running. How do you do, Mrs. Frost? What are you doing here, Jim? Why, Mr. Davis said you refused him flatly. Well, reconsidering, I thought I'd come down, look the ground over, and take the case. Great. I'll report to the office that it's in your hands from now on. Sure. It'll be a week before I can go quail hunting. My goodness. Somebody lose a quail? Adelaide. What? Uh, come right in, Mr. Henry. <laughs> City air. My throat's run dry. My emeralds were taken out of the library right over here. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm powerful. Sorry. Uh, I hope it wasn't you. Oh, no. A very old. Only 2,000 years. Oh, that's good. Maybe a little glue. Oh, do come on. Now, the safe is in here. Joan. Hello. Good evening. Joan, what have I told you about sitting in the dark with him? Haven't I asked you oh, not Herbert, to see... Herbert, uh, this is my daughter, Mr. Handley. And uh, this is, um, Joan, what do you call him? Darling. Uh, Mr. Darling. Oh, what's that? The name's Terry. Don Terry, Mr. Hanley. Terry. Terry. I had a cousin by that name. He was awful lucky, too. How's your luck been, son? Awful. Um, uh, Mr. Hanley, uh, tell us, uh, tell us who is the thief and uh, where are my emeralds? Adelaide, give him time. I don't need it. When I go into action, I'm greased lightning. Now, folks, this here mystery of the missing emeralds looks like it's going to be uh, mighty simple. The fact of the matter is, uh, uh, I've got a theory already. What sort of theory? Well, it's a sort of a kind of a, a clue. Where is it? Here. You know what that is? Yes, yeah, a blot. It's a fingerprint. No, oh, you're crazy. I've been told that before. You see that hangnail there? Yes. Well, that's all the evidence I need. Mrs. Frost, you're going to get your emeralds by breakfast. Oh, Mr. Hanby, I wouldn't think of wearing them for breakfast. Well, suit yourself, ma'am. Come on, Davis. I've got to clear the decks for action. Who are you trying to kid, Jim? Got to put on a show for these slickers. But I know what I'm talking about. You'll be on hand the first thing in the morning to open up that safe. They'll be there. What have you got in mind? Get going. I've got to empty this room. 
Won't you stay away? Why do I have to have you and burglars and... I beg your pardon. What do you want? Well, there was one question I missed asking. What is it? Well, how was your hair fixed the night of the party? What difference does it make? You've been tearing the blotters, breaking my vases, and now... Well, I've had enough of all this. I'm going. You come too, Joan. I want to have a talk with you. Better go take care of your mom, young lady. Well, is there anything else? Oh, yes. If you could point out to me how the guests were spread out the night of the party, it would be a big help. Why, certainly. They're all in the drawing room. Uh, right over here. Well, this is where they were. By the way, didn't you say something about your throat being dry when you came in? Oh, don't be bothered. Oh, well, that's all right. I'll have Ellis fix up something for us. I didn't do it. Honest, I didn't. There was... the lights went out and there was a voice and then a shot. Don't talk now. Don't talk. Get. Wait a minute, Miss Amby. You said you believed me. Wait a minute. Don't call the police. I didn't do Let it. Let me go. Let me go, Let me Mr. Go. Amby. 14 East State Street. Hit me and get going. Oh! Sauce. Yeah, tell them the pink kind, Abbott. How about a little butter? Have you got enough for breakfast? Give me Inspector Garrett in a hurry. But, but he couldn't. He, he's too dependable. He knew I was giving a dinner tomorrow night. Oh. If that's the cook, if it is. Call headquarters. It's called. Did you get him? Did you shoot him? Ah, I missed him. Am I all here? Yes. Then they missed me. Rush. I saw him running out the back alley. But he went out the front, down the street. Hold your horses. Can you show me? Sure. How do you get out the back, missus? My butler will show you. Alice. Henry, where are the police? Come on, talk, man. Can't you speak? No. I'm deflated. 
Go ahead. You talk first. Well, I don't know what happened except... Well, I, I opened the safe and somebody stuck a gun on my back and took the necklace. Then I heard Ella say, who's there? There was a shot and... Well, I grabbed her, but there was nothing. Tell me, does Joan believe I did it? She upped and run away. Run away? Where'd she go? I don't know and I don't care. She's decoying the police away from you. Well, I'm not gonna have her involved in this. I'll give myself up. And we'll sell your hash. You're so hogtied with circumstantial evidence now, it'll take an electric chair to untangle you. Well, I can't stay here. Why not? Pete, the fellow that owns this place, is an old friend of mine. Been buying my hay for 30 years. Running now. This is a perfect spot for you. It's quiet, no one will bother you. No one will even ever find you. Yoo-hoo! Joe! Darling! How'd you find me? I found Mr. Henry here. Suffering cats! The police are following you. Come on, we get out of here. Here. Get in there. Oh, not you. Here. Drive past that stable and keep going for a dollar's worth. Hey, what's Hurry. the idea? myself yet. I was hiding in your stable. It was spoiled by a couple of cooing doves. If you don't know what to do, don't blame us. Oh, but I do, though. When I sort out the owner of this timepiece, I'll have the murder. What's eating you? Why, this is my watch. <sighs> when do you recollect having it last? Well, I, I was looking at it uh, when those two fellas jumped at me at your farm. Dang that, Romo. A watch just naturally sticks to his fingers. Praise be, that's our man. He followed you clear to the Frost home. What's the matter, Pete? Oh. Joan! You're leading the police right back to him. I am not. You pike, you're giving that cab driver one dollar. I slipped him a 20 and he's heading for Yonkers wide open with the police after him. Still buying your way along. Any objections? It gets me places. It'll get you a darn good spanking. But I only could find some place to hide you. Pete. Hmm? Right. Maybe I can do both at the same time. Oh! Good night, Pete. Good night, Jim. I understand, ma'am, but if you could give me just a minute. Wait here. Are we going to stay here? And take the kind of abuse he's been giving us? Or leave? Why don't we take a chance and fight it out our own way? Let's. Get your duds off. The lady here ain't got no heart for housekeeping just now. Well, what do you expect us to do? Well, she could use a hired girl. Well, go and get her one. I have. You. So start readying up the dishes. You expect Joan to wash and wipe dishes? No, just wash. You'll wipe. Petty revenge, that's what it is. He's just trying to take advantage of us because of the fix we're in. Well, I won't stand for it. No matter what's happened, I'm still Joan Frost. 
all right now. The baby's asleep. These are the two. Here, Miss Jones. Think of your coming way down here just to help me. Well, wait a minute. There must be some misunderstanding. Oh, no. I understand. You're Mr. Terry. You two are going to be married. Only the other night, he said, that boy loves Miss Jones. Just like I love you. They're going to make a go of it. Tom could see things clear. Tom? Oh, I, I forgot. You always called him Ellis, didn't you? Oh, I never thought. I never thought of Ellis even having a first name. You're Mrs. Ellis? Oh, don't you know I'm suspected of... Oh, you didn't do it. Mr. Hanvey told me, and I'm sure he's right. You can stay here. You're safe. Yeah, she's right. They'd ever think of looking for you in the home of the man you was accused of shooting. Oh, stop it! Well, I guess I'd better tidy up. Oh, but no. Oh, but I want to. Maybe you'll miss him, too. That is, if he was a good butler. He was a swell butler. Ellis says the police have come and gone, so you can rest here easy for a spell. Why? Can't we take the watch that you found out at headquarters? Definitely proves Romo was at the frost. Only to us. That was your watch. And to the police, that clue's a homing pigeon. Comes right back to you. Well, I've got to do something. I'll take care of Romo and find out who he's working for. I'm the detective. You're supposed to be a writer, ain't you? Sure, there's my book. Now, you're going to forget all those highfalutin ideas about that five-volume book. You're going to write yourself an honest-to-goodness newspaper story. It's got to be good enough to catch the murder of that woman's husband. And good enough to save your own life, you understand? No. You're going to write this to the Globe. Now listen. Mr. Editor, they let me in when I told them how important it was. What's important? Who are you? How did you get in here? It's very important that I know if your final edition comes out exactly at 9.30. Exactly at 9.30, on the dot, for the last 20 years? Who are you? I'm the man that's bringing you Don Terry's column on the care and feeding of fish. There ain't nothing there about fish. It's about the murder. Get that guy back. Hold the final edition. Can't, it's on its way. Then follow up with an extra as quick as you can. Why, what's he got? What did Richard Harding Davis have when he covered the sinking of the Maine? He's got a great story here, great writing, great journalism. Great guns! Smith. Watch that guy. Dressed like this? What do you need to watch him? A tuxedo? Play me through the window. Mr. Dunn, what's the idea of this note? This note? Come to my office immediately. I got the tip you were spotted at the frost last night, and it signed the boss. I don't write notes. I don't sign myself the boss. You know that. Then it must be a phony. Someone must have spotted us. Hey, that buggy driver's talking to that hick dick Hanvey. It's Hanvey. Of all the sap layouts. He framed this note so we come dashing down to you, so he could follow us. Well, we're gonna stay right here. Oh, no, you're not. He knows too much already. Come on down here. Let him follow you. We'll take care of him. Get on your clothes. We're going to wake and kill a man. 
Why, Mr. Dunn, I said you were some punkins. I didn't want to see him. He found us behind a frost house. He's got us all disclosed. I'm willing to trade you a 30-hour start on the police for a signed confession and Mrs. Frost's fancy necklace. Now, what do you say? You can fool these two stooges, Hanvey, not me. You can't hang anything on us with this watch. You're kind of poaching on my preserves, ain't you, Mr. Dunn? I'm supposed to be the sleuth. Yes, and no one knows what you just found out. No, not yet they don't. They're not going to get a chance to. Don't let me keep you, boys. Come on. Now, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, uh, five minutes. You keep us your way into this, Hanvey. You're going out our way. At exactly 9.30, the final edition of The Globe is going to be out. 300,000 people will be reading it then. Reading what? All about you. About you two killing Ellis. What are you giving us? About you being accused of putting them up to it. Now, you can shoot me, but what are you going to do about the other 300,000? It's a stall. What are you going to do, Mr. Dunn? I'm going to headquarters. See Garrett, establish my alibi. I spent a very pleasant evening at the club last night. Well, how about us? We ain't got no alibi. Mr. Hanby put you on the spot. Let him get you off. Whoa, there. We was talking over a trade. Say, hey, what's got into him? I was fixing you guys to start on the police for them emeralds. We ain't got no emeralds, and we didn't kill nobody. No, not last night. You got us into a lot of undesirable publicity. You can tell that to the police, but you can't pull the wool over the eyes of James Wilford Hanby. That's just who we can't tell it to, because we were up there last night trying to hijack Terry. Funny we didn't get near him. <sighs> Do you expect me to believe that you're innocent, huh? Clean as the shite on a line. It's Mr. Hanby. Did you get Romo and Smith? No, they got me. You murderer! Get that gun! Why? Get away from that phone. Here you are, Romo. Oh, I thought you had me, didn't you? Yeah, yeah back squared or I'll tunnel I just six feet under the clipping. Why didn't you keep that gun? I don't need no firearms to handle them two. What are they doing here? Nothing. Now, don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. They can't do anything more to me. Listen, lady, you don't understand. It wasn't them, Mrs. Ellis. They didn't kill your husband. And he's going to prove it. Providing that gun don't go off. Now listen, you. Don't you start telling us our decorum. We're the ones that are still doing the pushing around around here. Stop it! This is my house. You can't stay here and quarrel among yourselves. You're all in the same fix. With a little more leeway, we got to have a chance of getting out of this. Did you find something? You fight him. He asked for leeway. Spread out. Now I was snooping through that closet up at the frost, and I run across quite a stack of papers. These two was on top. Someone had shoved him on the floor. Maybe it was that dirty murderer. Maybe it was. They had slid off in the last 24 hours. Because the paper on top of the pile now don't carry a bit of dust, none whatsoever. Lay off the buildup. Some guy hid in the closet. All right. Who was it? Now, that'll take quite a bit of calculating. Have you got a ruler, Mrs. Ellis? Yes. He was standing on this paper for quite a while, fidgeting. An amateur he was, because no professional would burgle with leather heels. Oh, Terry, you'd better take down some of these items. Uh, ten and a half shoe, indicating a height of five foot eleven. Soles worn on the outside, meaning a quite heavy man. Mm, I should say a man of about 210 pounds for that height. 215, maybe. Wait a minute. Give me that paper. No professional. Good condition. Five feet eleven. Heavy. Why, you flat foot a double crosser. What's up? That's a cockeyed good description of Jim Hanby, that's what. You were in that house, alone. You had as good a chance as any. Yeah, you've got to vindict yourself out of this, or I'll throw you back to the chickens. Now, don't get buckety with me. Oh, you men are insane, thinking Mr. Hanby could harm my husband. Now, if you fellas don't stop hampering me, you're going to have to get out of this thing alone. Well, I still say it looks suspicious. Well, don't blame us. The only thing is, you haven't spotted anybody else. Oh, but I have, though. I've got a fairly good notion who went into that closet, took those emeralds, and killed Mr. Ellis. And there's only one way to trap him. Well, come on, we're listening. Bait. The $30,000 the insurance company's offering for that necklace. Oh, he wouldn't dare try to get that money. Now there's a murder charge. Yeah, but that's hanging on you. As long as the police suspect Don Terry, the real criminal can operate without showing his hand. 
Now, if a new was in jail. In jail? Mm hmm. The real criminal couldn't take her for that 30000 without tipping to the police that they had jugged the wrong man. Oh, what do you want me to do, Mr. Hanby? Force that scalawag to show his hand. Now, you are going to write to that globe that you're giving yourself up at the Central Street Police Station tomorrow at midnight. You mean you really want him to go through with it? Well, it'll force that man into the open, and we'll have him by the time you're arrested. Suppose you don't. Well, then we'll have to find some other way of saving him from the chair. It's our last chance, June. It's too big a chance. Mr. Henry, once I wanted everything money could buy, he wanted to write a crazy book. Now we just want each other. And to do what you ask, why, we might even lose that. Mm-hmm, you might. Well, how about it, son? We can't miss, Joan. We just can't miss. All right, Terry. Come on, son. Start writing. Hurry up. Come on. You hide him. You got a pencil? Start writing. Now leave him alone. Oh, all right. Extra, extra. John Terry gives us a fight. Read all about it. The other town's got itself a first class sensation. The police are going to get the murder, Hanby's going to sleep in a haystack, and we're going to pay the bill. Oh, give Hanby a break. The old bird generally comes through. Mm. Yeah, we're through. As far as the Frost account's concerned, we're out $100,000. Yeah. Hanby, put him on. Now, look here, Hanby. We hired you to find those jewels, and we've been spending all our time trying to find you. We... Uh, what? What's that? What? I'm going to get your emeralds. Now, sometime before midnight, the thief is going to get in touch with you. I want you to tell him that I'm handling the case for the company. Yeah, but Hanby, look, I... Hanby! Hanby! He wants $30,000. Then you better give it to him. I told you he generally comes through. All right. Thank it. Yes, sir. Frank, tell the cashier to get $30,000. Cash. Yes, sir. Goes to that address. Mr. Hanby here? It's for you, Mr. Hanby. Is it the word you've been waiting for? No, it's the insurance money. Say, you ain't so dumb promoting yourself $30,000. If we was to quit right now and divvy up, that'd be 10,000 for you, 10,000 for me, and 10... Now, that'd be 14,900 for you, and the same for me. That's right. Envy, got a proposition for you. How would you like to make $200 clear? Don't let temptation blind you. This here is salvation money. Don't dump that, you little shrink! this into a Roman holiday. Well, I printed was news. Oh. Besides, I wanted to give the boy a chance to save himself. Yeah, by letting him accuse everybody but the Statue of Liberty. Now, they'd all be down here tonight to protect their interests if Terry doesn't show up. That's the end of your goal. He's still got more than an hour and a half. Oh. It's not even 10.30. Only an hour and a half left. We'll hear from that man. Hanvey's sure of it. He's not sure of it. He said it was only a chance. Well, I know, darling, but you... I won't let you take it. Don't, Joan. Can't you see? Look. What is it? It's for him, Hanvey. Hanvey. Where are you going? 
We're gonna give you our own personal, uh, convoy. You ignoramuses, can't you read? It says I gotta act alone. That $30,000 can take you a long way. How do we know you're not walking out on us? For the first time in your lives, you two are gonna trust someone. Keep that appointment, son. I won't cave in on you. Yes, sir. Thanks for the hospitality, Miss Ellis. Come on, that dog can take us a long way, too. Hey, you can't follow him. He's, he's right. How do you know, sucker? All you've seen him do is walk out that door. But you're confusing yourself with delusions. If you ain't coming, I'm gonna follow that smart guy myself. Oh, no, you don't. I'm gonna see that he don't get hurt by you or nobody else. Would you be interested in knowing my name is Hanvey? Not particularly, no. I'm from H. Atwood of Portland. <laughs> Thank you. Hello? Yes, this is Hanvey. Sure, I'll repeat after you. I'm to come to number 13, Mart Place, apartment one. I'm to make sure no one's following me. If I'm followed, you'll kill me. Well, that sounds reasonable. just heard that Romo and Smith are in this vicinity. We're throwing the net around four square blocks. Oh, yeah? Come on, let's get going. Andy called the cops from that phone booth. Smith, you demented. Let's get out of here. in case anyone cares. Where's the money? Show me. Hand it over. Oh, hold on, mister. Uh, You'll get the emeralds. Throw that money through here. What about my part of the bargain? You've broken it. Two men followed you down here. I had the police take care of them. The emeralds are somewhere here in the room. You can find them for yourself. the house he went into. Forget about him. We gotta keep going. He knifed us. I'm gonna get that hater before the cops get me.
out of here, will you? I'm getting handy. Well, thank you, Mrs. Ellis. We're grateful for everything. And for teaching me to, to boil an egg. I'll be helping you bake your wedding cake. Goodbye, you two. Good luck. Thank you. Well? On to the guillotine. It is a far, far better thing I do. Than we've ever done before. Gee, I'm scared. Oh, darling. Read in the paper about you going to the police station tonight. Buell and me is here to haul you. Thanks, Citizen Pete. Thanks for bringing the tumbril. She ain't no trouble. Glad to do it. Come on along. Necklace. We accuse Romo and Smith. Where are they? Why, we're picking them up downtown. Terry's the one to answer these questions if you dare show up. He will, he will. You know, if this fiesta is a failure, I... There's Terry oh. 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 Sort of Hold it. Save it exclusive for the Globe. From now on, you can write what you want, including your own ticket. Pick any job on the Globe. It's yours. Where's Jim Hanvey? Forget Hanvey. You can speak for yourself. In that smoke screen you wrote for the newspaper, you didn't give one fact, one bit of evidence that stood up. But Mr. Hanvey... Please, just a moment. The only thing we do know is that you were seen standing over the body with the gun. Now, what have you got to say? Nothing until I see Jim Hanvey. Take him away. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait That's a minute. all Get right. I know. I'm break. Don't Get out here. Never mind. Hanvey! Keep that cigar away from me. I'll explode like a gas balloon. Where have you been? What's the matter with you? I'm plum peaking. Did you get the emeralds? Yes, but I nearly died of doing it. If it hadn't have been for two no-good scoundrels that would rather see me shot than suffocated, I wouldn't be here now. Then what are you talking about? Romo and Smith. Like jumping out of the frying pan into the fire, it was. I certainly had to talk fast. But you still haven't shown us the emeralds, Jim. Hanvey, you promised us you'd know. I promised that when I got them emeralds, I'd have me the murder. And here they are. And that's the least of it. Ellis is dead. And the man who killed him knew those emeralds was going to be put back. That man got into the house. He waited in that closet until Terry was alone at the safe. That man killed Ellis to make his getaway. That man is in this room right now. Well, who is he? I'm going to give him a chance to tell that himself. They say confession is good for the soul. Everybody reach. We had to follow you to a police station, Handy, but we're going to get what we're after. OK, the lights. <coughs> Them lighted hands is the murderer, Romo. Get him, Smith. <coughs> Here's the rat. Let me go, Romo. Stop it. You done noble, Romo, but that's the right man. Davis! Why, this man's made so many mistakes. Yes, and they all led to you. Now, when I took you to the door that night, you didn't leave the house. You snuck into that closet. You know those jewels is going to be put back. And this is how you come to get yourself caught. Them bills was treated with swamp fire. That's the solution of phosphorus. And there's only two people in the whole wide world that touched them. You and me. Search him. When it comes to the art of frisking, I could save you a lot of time. All right, go ahead. Pardon me, boys. Did you get that? You get that, and you get this. What? That must be my money. You're right. That's our man. Take him away. Mm. Congratulations, Jim. Mr. Lambert, that really isn't your money. 
You were going to pay that for the return of the jewels. And as Mrs. Ellis has lost more than any of us, I think she ought to have part of it. Hmm. That's an idea, Jim. And a very good one. You know, all you people are a lot nicer than I thought when I first met up with you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Hanvey, I've definitely made up our mind that I'm going to announce the engagement of my daughter, Joan, to that darling boy. And I'm going to give a simply tremendous party tomorrow. And I want you to be the guest of honor. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't make it. I gotta start chasing something real elusive. That old cottontail rabbit. Well, Miss, goodbye, everybody. Good well, Mrs. good luck to you two. Thanks, Mr. Henry. Mr. Henry, can you drop this? Oh, that does look like mine. You can have it, son. Oh, thanks. Uh, will you autograph it for me? There's my teeth marks. Thanks. <laughs>